Joining us now here on the Rich Eisen Show is one of our favorites. We figured with Coach K announcing his retirement, let's get uh, Jay Billis here on the Rich Eisen Show from the Worldwide Leader in Sports and Duke University alum. How are you, Jay Billis? I am doing great, Rich. Thanks for having me. Great to be with you again. I appreciate that. I, I, I'll ask you first off, we were nervous about booking this kid from Connecticut. He's thrown four straight no-hitters, Jay, and he starts tomorrow. He hasn't given up. He hasn't given up a hit since the day before the NFL draft in late April, you know, but he said yes. I mean, what do you think that shows for this kid to say, sure, I'll talk about well, this? What do you think? That he doesn't believe in the unwritten rules of baseball where you're not supposed to mention no hitter. <laughs> uh, you got to pretend that things don't happen uh, while they're happening. Uh, I never really understood that, that nobody would talk to the pitcher in the dugout while a no hitter was going on. That, that seemed a little awkward. Were you ever superstitious playing at all, Jay? Did you ever have yeah. a superstition? Yeah. Yeah, I was. I was. Uh, if I didn't play well, I wouldn't wear the same pair of shoes again. That's why I have about a thousand pairs of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happened to Zion a couple years ago with Duke? Is that what happened to him? Yeah, thirty <laughs> seconds into the game, he knew it wasn't going to go well, so he just decided to change his shoes and change his knee. Blows out, just blow the whole thing out. Oh, yeah, I man. did that. I did that game actually, and when it happened, uh, you know, like President Obama was, was yeah, there and that. Spike Lee and all these guys and. You know, I, I was like, is this Duke Carolina or a Laker game when, you know, show, the Showtime Lakers were playing? And uh, I've never seen the air come out of a building like it did when that shoe popped. So what's it going to be like in that building when it's Coach K's final season next year? What do you think that's going to be like, Jay? Yeah, I, I mean, electric is uh, is going to be an understatement. And uh, I already got, uh, you know, my wife and I have season tickets there. Uh, at Duke and Cameron, and the reason we got him was I got tired of calling the basketball office begging for tickets when a friend of mine <laughs> wanted to go. Right. So we just bit the bullet and bought him. But my, as soon as Coach K announced his retirement, both my daughter and my son said, "Can we go? Uh-huh. Like, don't give the tickets away." And we're like, "Really? Um, yeah, they're going on eBay, by the way." Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be you know it's going to be an odd feeling. Obviously, it'll it'll certainly be a celebration uh, in so many respects. But uh, uh, even though that intellectually you knew that this time was coming, he's 74 years old, and he'll be 75 in February, um, you know, he, he's defied everything. I, I always figured that, that he, would, he would quit when his hair turned color, but uh, that, that nice. hasn't happened yet, so, right. so I, I think he should keep going. So why do you think now, I know he's been talking about it, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you um, the floor on your two cents as to why now? Why, why just this week, too, to make that announcement? Well, why now? It's it, it's stage of life. Um, you know, at age seventy four. I mean, when 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 you and I were kids, it was unfathomable that that this many coaches would coach into their seventies. I mean, when I, I grew up in Los Angeles, and when John Wooden quit in the uh, the seventy five Final Four, he announced his retirement. He was sixty five, and and I thought he was you know older than uh, than the pyramids. And now you got guys you know ten years older than him still going. And you know, Jim Beheim at Syracuse is saying, well, he's not even close to quitting. So. Um, uh, you know, it, it, because they've gone so long and have been so healthy and so effective, uh, it, it seems like it, you know, he could keep going, but I don't think it has anything to do with, uh, you know, the state of the game or the transfer portal, all this nonsense and, and not just coach K, but I've kind of pushed back on that with all, with all these coaches and ADs when people are saying, well, you know, everything's changing so much and they can't stand it. If they were all 40 years old, making this kind of money, they'd figure it out. And there's been tremendous change in the times that Coach K has been been coaching, and he's adapted to all of it. He could adapt to this. It's just his stage of life. He's got grandkids. Uh, his wife, uh, Mickey, who's a wonderful lady, you know, I'm sure she'd like to, to have a more normal life where they're, they're not uh, you know, slave to the recruiting calendar and all that stuff. Uh, as they enter their 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 golden years on into the future. So so I think it's more that than anything else. I I, I honestly. Uh, Rich have been amazed that that's the, the the most amazing thing to me about Coach K among the the many amazing things is that his enthusiasm for his job has never waned and his energy for it and and I I, I joked about it recently but I, I think it's actually a fair analogy I kind of called him the ultimate Sherpa because every year he takes a different group up to the uh, up to the to Everest and he never gets tired of setting up base camp and making sure everybody's got what they need and then guiding them up the mountain and trying to get to the summit. It's a different trip every time for him and he could say been there done that and and sort of mail it in and that that's sort of what 
older people tend to do is they kind of get tired of the day-to-day of it, and he's never gotten tired of it. Jay Bell is here on the Rich Eisen Show. When did you first meet him? When did he first cross your radar screen was, and your, yours yeah, on his? Yeah, I was his? 17 years old, mm-hmm. and I had just played in uh, in a thing called the, the equivalent of Five Star in the West Coast. I played in the Sports World Superstar Camp, and mm-hmm. I made the All-Star team, and I got – uh, a call from Duke uh, from one of their assistants named Chuck Swenson. And after that, it followed up for, from a call from, from Mike Krzyzewski. And I had never heard the name. I didn't know who he was. And I had heard of Duke because they played in the 1978 championship game against Kentucky, but I didn't know where Duke was. Hmm. Uh, if you had said it's in North Carolina, that wouldn't have registered with a California kid pre-internet. And, uh, and I did not have a great relationship with my high school coach. So when I was being recruited – all that mattered to me was who I was going to play for. What school I went to was of, of you know, secondary or tertiary concern. And so I liked him the best. Um, I came down to four coaches. I came down to Ted Owens at Kansas, Lute Olson at Iowa, and Jim Beheim at Syracuse. And, uh, and Coach K was the least well-known, least accomplished, uh, had the least amount of time in. And uh, I just knew, like, he was the right guy for me. I didn't know at the time, you know, I couldn't wrap my head around. He'd be there 42 years, right. and, you know, and, and be considered the greatest, you know, the great, maybe the greatest coach ever and, and all that stuff. But I knew he was, I knew he was great and I knew he was the best for me. So what made him so great? I mean, we know what his legacy is going to be, but what, 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 what was the secret sauce for him for 42 years to do it the way that he did it? And to do it uh, at Duke, what was what, what's the difference based on your your travels and your work that you've done for, for all these years at ESPN as well? What what do you got for me on that front, Jay? He he, he has a, an amazing ability to engender trust, and that that was really what got me was I trusted him right away uh, as a high school kid, and uh, and he was unfailingly honest and didn't always tell you what you wanted to hear honest, and you know when he was recruiting me. Um, you know, every every coach that recruited against him said, now, you realize if you go to Duke, he's going to make you play center for four years, and that's not your position. And I brought that up to him, and I said, everybody's telling me you're going to make me play center. And he said, well, I will for a year, um, but after that I'll recruit a big guy and, and move you back to your, your natural spot. And, and you know, I, I figured that most guys wouldn't admit that that was, that was going to be the case. And, uh, and it wound up, you know, I wound up playing center for four years. But <laughs> it never bothered me. Um, uh, those guys were right, but, but he did recruit, recruit other guys, but, um, it, it was, I, I never would have made another decision. And as much as I loved Lute Olson and, and Bayheim and, uh, and coach Owens, uh, and revered those guys, um, I never, I've never second guessed the decision, even when he was calling me the biggest wimp that had ever lived. And how could I not get that rebound? And, uh, you know, I can't believe you're that slow stuff like that. I never second guessed it. So he would be demanding and tough like that. So you don't think that uh, the 21st century athlete um, might blush um, or not appreciate that sort of hard coaching? I mean, do you, you don't think well, he's that changed. that's... he's changed that. And I'll give you an example. So sure. uh, this was, I can't remember the year, whether it's 2009 or whatever. I was at Duke to see practice. And, uh, and he, uh, Coach K was going to take the team in and watch film. And he, he looked at me on the sideline and says, why don't you come in, sit in the locker room, watch film with us. So I sat in the back and, and I started to get, it was almost like I was getting Vietnam flashbacks because he was running <laughs> something back and I was going, okay, Mason Plumley's about to get it. And I was going, all right, this was me. And I needed therapy after, after the film sessions. And he stopped the film, and I was expecting, okay, here comes fire and brimstone and wrath of God, except now he's actually considered a God. And, uh, and he, he, he said in, in a, just a normal tone of voice, he said, Mason, I've never had a good player do this. And if you want to be a good player, you better not be doing this again. And, and it was so effective, um, but, but it didn't beat him up. And, uh, and I, I thought, okay, mm-hmm. this guy is, is on a different level now. Uh, because, uh, you know, I, I needed to wear a flak jacket and a helmet during, uh, <laughs> during a film session when I played for him, and rightfully so, because, uh, you know, he would, he, it was, I put it on a tee for him to be able to go after me. But, but he, he certainly changed the way he's done things and adapted to, to things. But his, his ability to deliver a message and have it received and acted upon now, like he's, he's so much of a better coach now than he was when I played for him, and I don't say that 
uh, to be negative or to, to you know, in, in any jealousy. It's just that, that he keeps getting better and he's better. I think he'll be better next year than he was last year. And uh, I guess that's the way you, you expect it to be when you really think about it, but it's not the norm. You know, you don't see that stuff all the time. And, and he's a, he's a next level thinker. Um, he, he thinks relationships. He, he jumps on top of every issue at the very beginning before it becomes a bigger one. And, uh, and that's not true of everyone. Like he, he, he goes after the team when they're winning too, uh, basically saying, Hey, look, you know, we might've won this game, but this isn't going to win later. So we need to correct this. And we've had slippage here. We've done this where truthfully, a lot of coaches wouldn't do that because they wouldn't want to rock a winning boat. Jay Billis, a couple more minutes left with him right here from ESPN. And of course, uh, a long time Duke University alum and one of Coach K's first uh, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So we all knew this day would come, clearly. Uh, Father time uh, does not stand still. And the successor uh, handpicked is John Shire. Um, Is this the type of conduit you envisioned that Coach K would would leave the program in the hands of? What can you tell me uh, on that front? Yeah. I don't know what I envision, envision, Rich, because you know you get asked that, que- or I got asked that question a lot before this about who's the next guy, and and the truthful answer was I don't know. And to me, you know, the decision was was not only when uh, the difficulty of the decision was how. Like, do you do it at the end of a year and just not coach the following year, or do you do it like like he's done it here? This is an unusual way to do it um, because it's an unusual situation. Or do you do it like Dean Smith did right right before the following season, and then and then the university has to take an assistant? You know, you don't know. I, I I didn't know. It's a it's a crazy sort of decision to have to make, given the gravity of it. I mean, I think it's going to be the hardest act to follow in the history of, of uh, at least college sports, and I can't think of anybody else that's had a thirty five forty year run with this sort of sustained excellence, but. John Shire is an outstanding young coach, and uh, uh, he's technically skilled. Uh, he understands what he's getting into, and I think he is more than capable of doing this and doing it at, at the highest level. So I have, I'm a believer. I have no issue with, with, uh, with John um, uh, being the next choice. Uh, I don't know how other people feel, but um, I think he's a terrific choice, and the fact that Coach K believes in him so much uh, uh, should give everybody uh, a really good feeling about it because uh, of the times he's been wrong, recruiting me being the the, the, the one, um, he hasn't been wrong very often, and I don't think he's wrong here. How do you think Coach K is going to be as a retiree? Like, what do you think he's going to do? Will, will he totally disappear? Will he show up at a game? Will he? What do you think his his uh, his years as a former coach will be like? Jeff? I would say he'll be uh, – respectfully present and in a dignified way. Like, I don't think he's going anywhere and I think we're going to see a lot of him and I hope that's the case, but, uh, but I, I, I think he'll handle it in a wonderful way. I, I'm just, frankly, I, uh, you know, just being completely honest, mm-hmm. I don't know how to handle things right now. You know, when you announce the retirement, do I buy him a gift now or do I wait? <laughs> and I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I'm sure his answer is going to be you idiot. It's two gifts. It's now and later. Yes, yes of course. Um, yeah. So, I, and I don't know what people are going to give them. I think rocking chairs before the game are kind of antiquated, and you don't need to go there. Uh, I'm sure a nice case of wine or something like that sure. he would appreciate. Yeah. Uh, he claims to do a lot of gardening, maybe some gardening tools or some seeds or something. <laughs> um, but I, I can't. I'm going to have to think of a good gift, and then I have to think of uh, you know how many am I going to get. But I'll tell you, Rich, that the, the, there's a, a lot of discord among the former players right now about how thoughtless Coach K has been in announcing it now. Yes. Because a lot of us are playing in our member guest golf tournaments. And <laughs> Gerald Henderson has his club championship this weekend. I'm playing in a member guest right now. I think I heard somebody yet, in the background. Yeah, we, we have to take time to do interviews and uh, you know, talk about how great he is when we really should be on the range you yep. know, working, on our, okay. working on our game. Very... And uh, you know it's it's been kind of thoughtless, frankly. So he's he's not perfect. He's great, but he's not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> also, a very smart, fun, passive aggressive way to say that you're done with this interview. Go hit him straight, Jay. I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. And, hey, Rich, I've got Dave Feldman, a former ESPN Feldy. colleague of yours, as yeah. uh, is my guest and the member guest, okay. and he has graced me with every time he hits a good shot. Yes, he turns around and says, "You're welcome." Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like Feldy. Send my best to him. Thanks, Jay. I will. Take care, brother. You You got it. That's Jay Billis. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.